Just have a look at it with me. If the next thing that you are asked to do, which I am going to ask you to do, is find the derivative of this thing, that at this present moment, you're probably looking at this and you're wincing really hard because you're like, gross, I don't want to deal with this. The only mechanism we have to deal with this at the moment is just expand the whole thing and then you're going to get eight terms and you just go one by one and you're going to do the ball. Now doing the differentiation is not the hard part in this case, it's the expansion. You're like the algorithm is just gross, right? But hopefully, even throughout the course of this year, you've seen so much of our mathematical understanding or I should say the way we advance through mathematics is we turn complicated looking problems into problems we already know how to solve easily. And that's exactly what we're going to do with this. Okay? So right now, this is a function called y. And this variable over here is x, right? So it's a, a function of x called y. Okay? I'm going to rewrite this by introducing a new variable. By convention, we call it u. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, see this x squared plus 1 inside here, right? I'm going to replace that inside part with u. With you. <laughs> so I'm going to let u equal that, right? Now, if I've introduced this new letter, I can rewrite the original function in a much simpler form. Let's do it. If u is equal to this inside part, then I can say y is equal to not x squared plus 1. I can replace that with u, right? And that's been raised to the power of 7. Okay, now think about this, right? We originally had y as a function of x. Now I've written the same function y as a function of u. Okay, so I've changed the variable, right? But why this is handy is, have a look at this guy. Remember I introduced, we introduced Leibniz's notation to say, hey, you can have dy on dx, you can have dy on anything you like. I have something else here, not x's, right? So instead of writing dy on dx on the next line, I can write dy on du, okay? Now, I know it looks weird because you're like, whoa, different letter, okay? But it's exactly the same as what we did before, just I'm looking for u's instead of x's. What would you do with this? It's just a standard raised to a power. What happens to the 7? Very good. 7, the power comes to be the coefficient, and then there's the u, and the power reduces by 1. Okay? So you're like, great, that's nice. I've got a derivative, but it's not the actual derivative that I wanted. right? Like This is all to do with y's and x's. So how can I link this back to my original question? Ah, now think carefully, right? think carefully. If you have a look back over here, right? see this first line that we wrote here. Sorry, not first, second line that we wrote. It's not y as a function of x, it's u as a function of x, right? So this is a whole new thing that we can differentiate, right? If I just hid this, right? You would say, oh, that's just a regular question. I can differentiate that, no problem, right? But it won't be dy on dx. It's going to be d u on dx. That's what's out the front here. So out of this line, I can write du on dx. Can you differentiate this guy? What happens to the x squared? 2x. What happens to the plus 1? It disappears, doesn't change the gradient, so I've got a derivative now. Now look really carefully. Eyes up. Please look at this carefully. I have two derivatives on the board. They're different derivatives, right? Here's one, and here is the other. But hopefully you can see they are not just separate. They're not just unrelated. They're connected. They both have u's in them, right? In this one, the u is on the denominator. In this one, the u is on the numerator. But what I can do is I can link them together just like any other fraction. Watch this. dy on du times, that's this one here, times du on dx. Okay, so that's this derivative multiplied by that derivative. So for reasons that will become clear in a second, I'm going to get rid of all my u's now and replace them back with x's. So instead of writing 7u to the 6, I'm going to write 7 that to the 6, because that's what u is, right? So there's that to the power of 6. There's 7u to the 6. That's my first derivative. And then what do I multiply it by? Two. Just 2x. That's the second derivative, yeah? 2x. OK, now I'm going to tidy this up in a brief sec. There's not much to do to it, honestly. But before I do that, have a look at the left-hand side. This is just a pair of, remember the first advantage of this? These are just like 
They're not identical, but they're just like, for our purposes, fractions. What do you see happening with these fractions? What's the thing that stands out to you? Those, those du's, right? There's one on the bottom, there's one on the top. So just like regular fractions, I can actually treat these as things that get cancelled. When they cancel, what do you get left with? The dy is on the top, the dx is on the bottom. This is the thing I actually wanted from the beginning, right? Um, we can just tidy this up a teeny bit, that 2 and that 7. 14. Um, the x, I suppose, belongs out the front as well. And then you've got this guy to the power of 6. Okay. Now, this is the answer I actually wanted. This is the real derivative. The way I got to it was I had to introduce this extra function to simplify things. But then, once I've got an extra derivative, look at this line here. See how I linked these together? It's like a, a chain of connected derivatives. And that's what this rule that we've just established is named after, this chain of derivatives that we have here. This thing is called the chain rule. Just like when we established that if you differentiate, if you differentiate x to the power of n, right? You can just say that is, what's the rule? What happens to the n? Comes out the front, it's the coefficient, right? And what's the rest of it? Can you help me out? x to the? n minus 1, very good. So we established this rule, not because we want you to memorize stuff, but because this is so much faster than doing first principles every time, right? Now this is a new rule, we're not giving it to you so you memorize more rules, we're doing it because it's so much faster than dealing with this thing. Like how gross would that be and how error prone if I actually had to manually expand this thing, okay? So this is the chain rule right down here. If you want to put it in like a big box, it's just a bit of a weird thing to put in a box. You would say dy on dx. This is the actual derivative that you're interested in, right? You can calculate it by working out a chain of related derivatives. And because we usually use the letter u to indicate like this substitution, that's what it looks like. Okay? So let me see if you can try your hand at doing this one on your own. Consider y equals. All right, we're going to give you this. For can you give that one a go? No, wait, I'm going to change it a little bit. Sorry. There we go. Can you give that one a go? Have a look at it carefully. Remember what we did. We said that thing looks gross. I don't want to really deal with it because it looks disgusting. But if I can write it with a substitution, let u equal, and I want you to think about what might be a handy thing to substitute in there. Then treat it like a regular derivative and see where you can go. All right? Have a think. How am I use? Are they doing okay? I've had I've had worse. You've trained I I really have. If you've got something, call me or Mrs. Lee's over and we'll have a look. So you've just gone straight there and you haven't introduced the substitution, have you? The substitution? Yeah, they'll let u equal blah, 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 blah. You've sort of just done that in the background, haven't you? Because uh, I don't see any, I don't see any u's here, right? Oh, right. Which is fine. Oh. Like, I think that is the answer. But you've just skipped over it. You've just done it in your head, which is okay. But just it would really help me if you, sh if you show me that working, especially while we're still early on in this. Okay. Mainly because, Gary, while you will get to the point where you can do these in your head without the substitution, 
we will give you functions that you cannot possibly do in your head. So we need you to show that something. Sort of doing it visually, just like you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I get it. You're like, oh, I'm going to do, essentially you're doing the outside and the inside, yeah. which is the way I'm going to talk about it. But I want you to actually, I still want to see the derivatives working together. That's the thing we're assessing, okay? When we differentiate the x squared, we do get 2x. Yeah. When we differentiate the 1, the derivative of a constant is always just 0. So, in fact, it's plus 0 on the end there. Yeah, all good. Hey, Russell. How did this become u squared? Think about that. Let me know when you're ready, Mrs. Lees. Are you going to answer? Yeah. I'm going to, can I show everyone? Okay, guys, real quick, because you're going to have to race off to roll call briefly. Have a look. The first thing I'm asking you to do is introduce a substitution. You, what did you choose? 3x plus, x plus 2. As a, just a very, very broad generalization, see that thing in the brackets? The thing in the brackets is the thing you want to introduce as a substitution. We colloquially call it the inside function. It's kind of buried deep inside the rest of the function. Once you've got this, you know later on you're going to need the derivative of this thing, du on dx. In this case, what is du on dx? It's just 3, isn't it? So I'm going to write that straight away. du on dx equals 3, and I'm going to tuck it in the back of my mind. Then I think about the original function y in terms of, not in terms of x's, which is how I started, but in terms of use, the things that I introduced. So I'm going to write it as 4 on x3. u cubed, because I've replaced 3x plus 2. And then I'm going to do one more step and write it in negative index form. We will pick this up again in period uh, 4, 3, 5. We will pick this up at some stage later in the day, just to confirm you got the right answer, and see where else we can take this. Thanks.